<clears throat> Hi everyone, my name is Ben Blaschke, uh, Managing Editor of Insider Asian Gaming. Uh, joining me for today's trade talk is uh, Peter Cohen. Uh, Peter is the former CEO and Executive Commissioner for Victoria State Gaming Regulator and current Director of Regulatory Affairs for the Agenda Group. Uh, Peter, thanks for joining us. Great to see you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Ben. Good to see you too. So, uh, Lots to talk about today uh, around Crown Resorts. Of course, we've seen uh, plenty happening for Crown over the past 12 to 18 months. And again, this week, there was some action taken uh, against Crown by the Victorian Gaming Regulator. Uh, on Tuesday, the regulator announced that uh, it had issued a $1 million fine to Crown and also a, a ban on uh, on resuming any junker operations until it gets the, the go ahead from the regulator. Um, so this is all based on a, a show cause notice that the regulator issued last year. And Peter, first of all, I'm interested to get your, your take on the punishment handed down this week. It's a stiff fine. There's no question about that. It's the largest fine that the Victorian State Gaming Regulator has ever imposed on Crown. The previous largest was, I think, 300000 so we're something we're talking about something you know, more than three times the size of the previous largest fine. Some people might say it doesn't seem large enough, but the reality is it's the largest fine the regulator could impose. The law says the maximum fine possible is a million dollars. The only other options available to the regulator to be tougher than a one million dollar fine is to either suspend the license or cancel the license. Now, you know, they're the nuclear options, um, and I'm not saying they weren't thought about by the regulator, but Clearly, a $1 million fine tells us the regulator is severely displeased with Crown's behaviour in the last little while. I mean, you, you mentioned that $1 million is the maximum allowable. Uh, do you think that's enough to achieve its purpose, given we're talking talking about you know, under normal circumstances, a company that you know, earns uh, you know many hundreds of million dollars each year? I think the difficulty is that the million dollars is written into legislation. So to change that, you'd need to go back to the parliament to get approval. Now that can happen, but it has been in the act as $1 million since the act was proclaimed. And that act is now 30 years old. It was, it's the 1991 Casino Control Act. And clearly a million dollars then is a significantly different number in real terms to a million dollars today. So I could see the parliament deciding to either raise the maximum or possibly just get rid of the maximum limit and leave it open to the regulator to find whatever it thinks is an appropriate number. I don't know whether the government is considering that, but it would make sense to me that they would uh, to give the regulator more scope to issue a fine rather than having to go to that nuclear option I mentioned before of either suspension or cancellation of the license. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting point you raised, Peter. I mean, we've looked at obviously there's a Royal Commission going on right now as well, looking into Crown Resorts or Crown Melbourne in particular in Victoria. Uh, but as you say, the $1 million fine is the, the most currently permissible or currently allowed by the by the regulator. Does this say something at the moment about the powers that the regulator has been granted? I mean, could it, should it have more in some ways? Um, I think that, I think it should have a higher threshold of a fine that it can impose, but that's, it, but it's, got the necessary powers it needs to regulate Crown. That, that, the only bit we're talking about there is the quantum of the fine. Um, it's got plenty of powers to regulate Crown, including the ability, as we've seen has happened in New South Wales, the ability to find associates, that is people who are decision makers at Crown unsuitable and force them to leave the company. So the regulator still has plenty of tools available to it to ensure that the regulation of the casino in Victoria is, is done appropriately. In the perfect world, it shouldn't need to ever issue a fine. We don't live in a perfect world, so it's always going to need to have some ability to take punishment against Crown. I think $1 million is a significant fine, but I can also see why it's probably time to lift that threshold. Sure. Of course, as I mentioned, the other part of this uh, disciplinary action was uh, around you know, a, a permission to have junket operations, to resume junket operations. Now, I know that Crown at this particular stage has said that it, it won't do so anyway, just at the moment. Um, what are your thoughts on that part of the punishment? Uh, it, look, it's hardly surprising because the purpose of the discipline reaction or the, the, the basis of the discipline reaction was a failure by Crown to fulfil its regulatory responsibilities for junkets appropriately. The model in Victoria saw the licensing of junkets abolished in 2004 and the responsibility for ensuring suitability was transferred to the to, from the regulator to Crown 
they were meant to undertake due diligence assessment and the regulator's job was to audit that process to ensure it was being done properly. Some, somewhere something went wrong and Crown wasn't doing its job properly. That's what the disciplinary action tells us. Um, Crown can fix that. And until they fix that, it's appropriate that they don't not have any junkets. Whether they ever will have junkets again, we know is a moot point because there are so many different views um, and comments coming from uh, the, uh, the inquiry in New South Wales. We anticipate there'll be some commentary on it from the Royal Commission in Victoria and possibly Western Australia. So, you know, the days of junket play in Australia may be uh, over. Um, we'll have to wait and see. So the disciplinary action about junkets might actually just be a, a non-event if junkets are not going to proceed anyway, but it's understandable why they're in place because Crown failed to do its junket regulation properly. This uh, disciplinary action obviously is handed down in the midst of the Royal Commission in Victoria. Will the Royal Commission look at this punishment and perhaps take that on board in their own findings? I'm not sure if the quantum of the punishment will be taken on board, but the findings of the investigation which led to the disciplinary action being taken, I think will be the relevant matter that the Royal Commission will look into. And that's the, that's the way it ought to be. They should look at what was it that caused the problem. The punishment is the state regulators um, approach to solving it. But I think the Royal Commission has to have a broader purpose than thinking about whether the disciplinary action value or that the amount that was fined was of interest or not of interest. I think it's the failure of Crown as determined by the regulator to fulfill its role in junkets, which is the issue here, not the size of the fine. And just uh, before we finish up, Peter, we've, um, as the Royal Commission, as I said, is underway, Commissioner Finkelstein has outlined already a, a number of areas he wants to explore over the coming months. Uh, I think problem gambling was one. Obviously, you know, the, the findings in New South Wales, I think, will be looked into further. Um, what are your thoughts on, on his approach that he's, he's outlined? And do you have any of your own predictions on, on how this Royal Commission and its findings might play out? I'm not in a position to determine which way the Royal Commission will find on any matter. But the one thing we do know about Royal Commissions in Australia is that whatever the findings are, they will be considered to be correct in the sense that they, they're not arguable. You, you, if a Royal Commissioner says item X occurred, everyone will agree that item X occurred. So it, it could work in one of two ways. If, for example, the Commissioner says Crown actually has a very good standard of responsible gambling, that'll be very helpful to Crown because for the next two or three years, they'll be able to say when people complain about Crown, they'll be able to say, well, the Royal Commission actually gave us a clean bill of health and no one can do better than what the Royal Commission said. Of course, the converse is also true. If the Royal Commission says that Crown has failures in its approach to responsible gambling, that'll be problematic for Crown and they'll have to rectify whatever those, finding, whatever those failures were that were found by the Royal Commission. All right, um, thanks, Peter, great insight, and I uh, look forward to uh, talking to you next time. You're welcome, Ben.